Hey guys, today I will talk about a speculation that I am buying into. I have a little bit more cash flow, if you will, and now I can begin buying cards again in hoarding method. So I like this card a lot. There's not much I need to say that I haven't already said about the card. It is very strong. It is a standard mythic, so its price I mean, its price is limited by the fact that it is a standard mythic printed in or with a heavy print run. So that will always control what this ceiling will be. However, I do believe this card is a $25 card, $30 card down the road. Now, it may take some time and it might take rotation. However, it will get there. I'm almost certain of that fact. I compare it to another card that I grew up playing, uh, Bang Slayer Angel, the $50 angel that you needed four of. I remember it being a combination of a core set, I believe it was M11. So not much of M11 was open being a core set. It was also a combination that it was played in every single, pretty much every single deck. It made every deck better. And the circumstances remind me a lot of the current circumstances. Now, remove the core set because this is not from a core set. This is from a heavily printed standard set. It still has that power level. Um, all the check, all the boxes that have to be checked off for me have been checked off. It's very powerful. Uh, it has the ability to be played in a control deck. It has the ability to be played in a white weenie aggro deck. It's flexible. And once you get on board, it's just dominant. And there's very few cards like that. Uh, I remember Morphling was the first one I experienced where if you got your Morphling online and you had mana untapped, blue mana untapped, very difficult to deal with. Aetherling was kind of like that for a little bit of time, but removal was very good. And you can always say, yeah, you can hit it with removal. It might not be the best against dragons, these certain dragons in standard right now, which it doesn't have protection from. If it's not good against Hazret, it's not good against pretty much red deck wins, which theoretically it should be the best against that, right? But it's not. However... All it takes is a control deck that really wants to build. It's a great defender. It will prolong the game so you can gain control of it. All the checks, uh, it reminds me so much of Bane Slayer Angel. There was a time where Bane Slayer Angel was the Tamagoyf. That was the comparison everyone made was Bane Slayer Angel was the next Tamagoyf. Now, historically, we know that didn't happen. And the big difference is Tomagorf is 2 and Baneslayer is 5. So raw power, format defining power in spades. So he's got cross format appeal, which actually wasn't true. Member of the Anointing Angel tribe, which was a lot more important back then. And she's a mythic rare and she's a mythic rare from a set that was drafted two months in mid-2009. Most decks would be better if they ran her. Many dealers are out of stock. The main issue is that there simply are you know, not enough of them to fill decks. I don't think there will be as big of a supply issue. So one of the reasons Bane Slayer went to 50 was there was a supply issue. People didn't have this card. No one drafted it. No one drafted the set it was in. That's not going to be the same problem for Lyra. But Lyra has something very important going for her, and that's she's an angel tribe. She's a legendary angel, and people like that. Uh, I don't think that Lyra will ever fall below $10, or if she does, it was probably due to a reprint. Or a, It would be interesting to buy her at $10. I would increase the rate of buying at $10. I like this type of buy. Uh, mainly because I don't expect her to spike super soon. I expect her to spike after the red decks rotate out. 
it's very strange, right? Because when you look at Lyra, you think she would be very good against these red decks, but she's actually the worst against these red decks, and she's actually very good as a control card against other control decks. So when you look at Baneslayer Angel, it's an interesting price graph. If you go back historically, it does hit the $50 mark. It has no modern playability currently. It has very lit little eternal playability. People don't even... Unless you have a very dedicated angel deck, this is not even one of the angels you want in your deck. So time has been very, very harsh on Baneslayer Angel. One of the strongest cards when it came out. Uh, a card that many said would was on the same power level and same eternal playability as Tamagoyf. All this being said is... Her hope, the only hope of this card going up in price is in standard. It's not something that you can hold on forever and say, oh, you know, one day this card will be $25 or $30. It's not a Liliana of the Veil. It will not survive a reprint should it have one. But during its standard life, I can see it going hitting $20, $25, and that's when you have to sell. So what I'm basing this whole video on is you should, I'm going to buy into it. She's going to hit $25 at some point in time, and I'm going to sell out. This is not something like Philia where you just hold until the cows come home. This is something that as soon as she hits the $25 mark, you need to be on that eBay. <laughs> you need to go sell her as fast as you can because time has not been good for five manor planeswalkers um five mana angels mythic angels and that's just the truth yes she is a legendary so that does add a little bit more but bane slayer was also you know bane slayer was also a printed in a set with much less supply than this one so i like her but i don't like her long term i think you get in and then you get out and that's how you treat most standard mythics right now. So it's kind of a game. I want to see if I can play this game correctly. So I have, I've been buying her at 12, 13, 14, now 15. Or actually 14, 50 with shipping, uh, shipping included. I, actually, I do want her to drop a little bit more. If she drops at 10, I will double or triple the urgency to buy in. I do see her being dominant. And the reason that I know, I, I go back and look at cards, and sometimes I'm wrong. Uh, one of the good examples of a card I was wrong on was I thought Lothlift Troll from Return to Ravnica reminded me a lot of Wild Mongrel from, what was that, Odyssey? And I was like, oh man, this is like going to be dominant. Because I remember Wild Mongrel just dominating, running over everybody. But there were some factors I didn't consider. Uh, Wild Mongrel was, you know, the creatures were much weaker uh, at that time than RTR, where the creatures were very strong. And the double, the green, the Golgari on the troll actually hurt it quite a bit because the Mongol could be played in many decks, uh, blue decks like Flashback and all that stuff. It had more synergy because it was one color. And that's something I've learned. So whenever you guys see a video from mine, I always talk about how many colors it is because I've learned one of the most important factors of playability is you might have a very strong planeswalker like Nyssa and it's green blue. It's no longer playable because unless there's a Simic deck or a Bant, Bant deck or something like that, uh, it's just not playable because it's not in the correct colors. That's, that's probably the most important lesson I learned from that particular troll was uh, you got to stick with monocolor. Like, or in the case of Khan, Scion of Urza, obviously colorless, like Khan Liberated does, or Ugin, like it does allow it to be played in way more decks than if it was triple color or double color. Um, double color is still attractive to me. Um, I wanted to like Huli and stuff, but I knew from experience that unless a Boros deck came out, Huli is a dead card because it's Boros and you, if those colors, most cards, 95 to 99% of cards in standard will see no eternal modern legacy play ever. So it's the time of, quote, investment or the time where you can make money from it is in standard. 
Now, it is much, much easier to get a card like Lyra into a deck than it is to get a Planeswalker that's uh, even Narset Transcendent. That's You think it's blue-white, you think it wants it, but it doesn't want that. It wants a different card. So anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.